let's talk about how to embed videos and media so the students don't have to go to another tab or a new window in order to access items. This is going to do a couple things. First of all, it's going to increase the likelihood that a student is going to watch the video or interact with the page that you want them to interact with. And also, it's going to eliminate the distractions that come with going to another tab or another window. So when I embed media, it's going to look like this. So this is a video about how to set up the digital interactive notebook. And you can see students can just click play and the video is going to start playing right here within the Canvas page and they don't need to go to another tab. Another example of how you can embed media is right here where I have students playing this matching game that I've created and it's embedded right here so I didn't make them go to another website to do it they just play right here and then they can submit a screenshot now if they want to see it better they can click that full screen button and bring it up to another tab but it comes up right here for students to interact with so let's talk about how to do this whether you're in a page or an assignment or a discussion or whatever you're just going to need to go in and edit and then you're going to see this button right here that looks like the little YouTube play button and then a music note. That is the record upload media button. And when you click down you're going to see you've got some options. So if we click upload record media you'll see you can just drag a file from your computer. This is not really the best option because then the student is going to have to download the file in order to watch it which kind of defeats the purpose because it's giving them another step you also can record directly in canvas and upload it which is nice the only thing I don't like about this is you can't actually keep the video in your kind of files forever it'll stay on canvas but it makes it a little bit more complicated. And then we have embed. Embed is what we're actually going to be doing today. The easiest way for you to do this is for you to create your video however you would normally create it. If you create it using QuickTime and do a screen recording, great. If you use something like Screencastify, great. If you use um, just Photo Booth to record yourself talking, any of these options are going to work. I then take the file and put it in my Google Drive and I actually make you can see this is a folder that I've called videos for students and I just kind of keep all of my little videos there so once you've uploaded it you can pull up the video like this and then there's just a couple things that we need to change on the settings so I'm gonna click these three dots here and I'm going to click open in a new window. The first thing that we need to do is we need to hit the three dots and then hit the share button. We need to make sure that we have it set up so that anyone in my district can see it or however you want your share settings to be set up. But if you have it set to what it is originally, which is probably restricted, you need to make sure you change it to either anyone with the link or whatever the name of your school system is. And I'm just going to make sure that they're viewers because I don't want them to go in and actually edit anything. Now, what you could do is just give them the link, but we're going to be embedding it. So we're going to click this three dots again, and we're going to click embed item. And you see, it's going to give us this wild code. You don't actually have to understand any of this code in order for this to work. So I'm going to copy it. I'm going to come back to Canvas. And now I'm going to paste that code that I just grabbed. And then I'm going to hit submit. And there's my video. And then I can add text above it that just says, watch this video or give them directions. Since Google's been having some issues lately, something else I'm doing is I'm also copying the link and I'm also going to link the video just in case a student is having trouble with the video coming up here. So they have two options, but it still looks clean and it's very obvious that the student needs to watch a video because there's a big video here. 
And then to save it, we're obviously just going to come down and we're going to hit save. And so this is what it will look like for students. Students still have the option to hit this button, which will pop the video out into another tab if they needed to make it full screen or if they just liked having it open on another tab. And you can see they essentially get all the functions that they would normally have with YouTube. So a play button, a volume button, captions, settings, um, full screen, whatever. I can also do this with YouTube videos. So I can go to insert and media just like I did before. And I'm going to go pull up a video from YouTube. So let's say this is the video that I want my students to be able to see. So normally you would just give them this link, right? But what we're going to do this time is we're going to hit the share button under the video. And again, here's a link, but this time I'm going to hit this embed button. And again, it's going to give me that giant code that really doesn't make any sense. But again, you don't have to understand it. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to hit embed. And I'm going to paste that code. And now you have your YouTube video embedded. Again, just in case the student may be having an issue, I can still do the watch this video text. And I can still grab the link for students and link the video just in case a student has a really slow internet connection and it's maybe not popping up for them right here. Another cool thing that embedding videos from YouTube um, or sharing videos from YouTube allows you to do is let's say that, I mean, this is a two hour video because it's the audio for a book. Let's say we were actually right here at like 55 minutes. I could set it so that when students start to watch it, it will start at this exact time. This lets you edit out anything that you don't feel like students need to waste time watching um, just at the beginning. So if I copy this code, this will take students to just 55 minutes. I can also do this with embed. I just make sure that I've checked this box and then I'm good to go. Now that we know we're looking for the word embed, you may find that actually a lot of websites that you use can give you an embed code. So this is where I made that game, it's called learningapps.org, and they will give you an embed code. I just scroll down here to the bottom, and instead of giving students the link, I'm just going to copy and paste this code. And I'm going to do it the exact same way that I've been doing it. I'm going to hit that media resources button, I'm going to hit embed, I'm going to paste it, and then I'm going to hit submit. And it's going to paste that whole thing in there for students. If students are having trouble getting things to load, I can do the same thing I'm, I've been doing. I could say play this game and then I can link the game for the students in case they're having trouble with it loading. So now when a student comes to this page, instead of going to another website, they will just be able to play the game directly right here. You can embed things from a lot of websites. Kahoot will let you embed directly. Quizlet will let you embed directly and a lot of other things that we probably use on a daily basis will give you an embed code. So I would challenge you to maybe look at the websites and apps that you use and see if you can start embedding the media directly onto the page to eliminate any student distractions from going to other tabs or websites and also to help students know exactly what they need to do. It's very obvious that they need to watch a video if there's a video really big on the screen. Or it's very obvious that they need to play this game if it shows up really big on the screen. I hope that was helpful and I'll talk to you again next time.